The poem that I will be performing in just a few short moments for you today is a poem that I dedicated to the celebration of the greatest women that ever walked on this earth. And they are four women who reached the level of excellence. And I'm just going to take a few seconds to explain all four of them. So the first of them, and in no particular order, is Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, the tyrannical pharaoh. For those of you who know her story, she accepted Islam in secret when Musa salam, came with the message. And later on, her tyrannical husband, Fir'aun, found out and he tortured her and wanted her to renounce her faith. And she decided to accept Islam and to die as a martyr, and she never renounced her faith. The second of these amazing women is Khadija radiallahu anha, who is the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the woman who embraced him when revelation descended. And the third is Maryam, peace and blessings be upon her and her son Isa alayhi salam. She was known for her modesty and for her piety and for her obedience to Allah and to her parents. And the fourth is, of course, Fatima, the daughter of the, of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are told about Fatima radiallahu anha that there is no one who emulated the characteristics and the mannerisms of the Prophet, peace be upon him, more than her. And so peace and blessings be upon all of them. And without any further ado, I will begin my piece, but before I want to explain the dedication of this poem, I would like to first of all dedicate this poem to my mother, who bore me in hardship and who raised me and continues to inspire me in everything that she does. I would like to dedicate this poem to my son, Abdurrahman, who I was blessed with nine months ago. And I would like to dedicate this poem to my husband, Jihad, who is a constant support and a, a source of tranquility for me. And it was his name and his being and character that was an inspiration for the title of my book, Nefsi Jihad Upon Myself. And now I will begin my poem, May This Be For The Sake Of Allah. I am not from disnified princess Yasmins. I am from dignified queens, from lands in the east where the sun's heat labored to make diamonds from a sand that was purified by toil and struggle. I am not from an era where beauty is learnt through YouTube tutorials and Instagram deets. I belong to a lineage of warrior women who fought on front lines and cared less for winged lines, like Um Amara who took 12 wounds to protect the Rasul, peace be upon him. And he said to her, who is as strong as you, Um Amara? I learn beauty tips from an Egyptian queen who died being tortured in African heat who was stoned and whose skin was charred and singed by a searing sun that had no option but to rise that day see her soul longed for something greater than a mortal pharaoh she was a queen subservient only to the king of kings and her last words shall forever reign on the throne of my mind so that i am reminded for what cause she died for when she said in the midst of her martyrdom my lord build for me with you a home in paradise and soon after, she began to smile as her home was being shown to her. So forget about fluffy eyebrows, Egyptian winged liners, and contoured noses, because her memory teaches me how to get my brain on fleek. We, women, whom ignorance deems to be weak, 
See through eyes that are bold but sweet, feel through hearts that are robust but meek. And we believe in a Lord who is irresistible, who is manifest and who is hidden. We women, followers of a religion that teaches us to be confident but humbly, teaches us that neither widow nor divorcee should be made taboo, demonstrated through the orphaned final seal whose first love was a widow with children. Khadija bint Khwailid. And might I mention that she was also a very successful businesswoman. And we are in no need of modern constructs to demonstrate how a wife should love a husband when we have in Khadija an exemplary woman of excellence in whose home Gabriel entered and gave peace from her Lord. I have a teacher whose wisdom and belief were like a tree firmly established in its roots and whose legacy live on for me to nourish myself from its fruits. I come from excellence, a message nurtured in loving mothers who raise prophets and nations and they never once felt worthless in the liberation of motherhood, no boycott genes or fight to enter a man's world because these women knew that women rule and that man is only a product of woman's strength. It took him nine months to gain vigor from her, and even then he came into the world crying, except Jesus, son of Maryam, Isa, slave of God. When the pangs of childbirth drove her to underneath a date tree in the valley of Bethlehem and she was told, grieve not as your Lord has provided water and dates and peace be upon him the day that he was born, the day that he shall die and the day that he will be raised alive. I come from nobility found in the archaic early slaves of Israel from an immaculate conception to the betrayal by possibly a disciple and all the while faith in God guided and she, the epitome of righteousness, how virtuous was she who was chosen to carry a mighty messenger. So please, Mr. Media, don't give me Kardashian standards when the mother of Christ showed me liberation through veiling because being Armenian is no longer exotic once it conforms, but real women of prowess are those that do not yield to being objectified and hypersexualized commodities. No, they are glowing and dazzling beacons who left the womb in weakness and who grew in strength demonstrating that beauty is not in the eye of CBS and that beauty is indeed in the deed done with pure intent. That my soul satisfaction is only in accordance to my attraction to divine scripture and in worship to the one and nothing but he. See, as women, we are told that our beauty is in feminine mystique. But what if I told you that to be feminine requires a secret power? It requires strength to preserve physical beauty in a world where even the believing man has an affinity to what is outwardly appeasing. We still maintain what is called justice to our souls by perfecting our relationship with our Lord, who is Al-Wadud, most loving. See, the eyes of man shall constantly rove if his heart is covetous, but we women have some control over where that invasive glare rests. Imagine it had the power to slap the lewd face before it had any chance to unlace and untie any dignity we had as the human race. Through chiseled cheekbones and feline faces, through the incisor's knife and cat-shaped eyes, the corrected woman strives. But a lioness is only so because of her spirit, not because of what sexual desire she elicits. So for all those that have gone under, let me introduce you to the mother of Marta Sumeya, former slave, 
who when asked to betray her Lord rejected and consequently felt the piercing sword straight through her womb. And here we are in this battle against vanity when my pious predecessors were too busy defending their rights for life. My religion posits and deposits the investment of previous madams equal children of Adam because in our religion Eve was forgiven too. And this earth is not toil, it is testing. And suffering is not God's punishment on earth for women, no. In God's eyes we are equal, not man's sequel. And all thanks to my creator for giving me Fatima and Aisha peace and blessings be upon them both for establishing scholarship of women upon this earth. I, woman, more than any mammal have the capacity to trace a civilization that could not care less for extravagance. It does not require cosmetic alterations to make it complete, no. The completion of my deen occurred 1400 years ago. Ilioma akmeltu lekum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lekum al islam adina. And it does not require large lips, small waists, and wide hips to shake a male world for recognition, no. It speaks to the soul. It speaks to the enterprise that treks stars and splits moons. It is present and it is crescent in its smell and in its aura because it is belief that shall cause the animal to ascend to angelic levels. And it cannot be denied to the cliché of beauty is in the eye of the beholder, no. It is a unanimous truth. And it is that he whose vision encompasses all and that none encompasses him. It is that he is irresistible and that we women choose to submit to none but him. Thank you.